This week in Rio Pirate Ball. What's up, everybody? Greg Mercer here for week number six of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. Let's get right to it. We're exactly one quarter of the way through the season. It's pretty apparent at this point how the 2012 Pirates are shaping up. Their offense is dead last in the NL in almost every category, most notably scoring slightly under three runs per game. At the same time, the pitching staff is in the top five in terms of ERA, which is how the Pirates have managed to stay near the 500 mark at 19 and 22. If there's one stat that I love to reference every year, it's the 40 game record and how it relates to the team's final record. The Pirates have had a record of 18 and 22 or 19 and 21 for nine out of the last 11 years. Sadly, although the team normally hovers near the 500 mark for the first few months, the Pirates have not won more than 75 games in any of those seasons. With this preponderance of data, the obvious lack of any offensive punch, and the relative volatility of pitching as the season wears on, I have serious doubts that the streak is going to stop this year. School me once. Shame on... Shame on you. It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. Outside of Andrew McCutcheon, Josh Harrison might be the most electrifying offensive player on the Pirates right now. If you're some man, what the rock is cooking? After his 12th hitting heroics last Sunday and a couple of decent starts, there's an outcry by many Pirates fans to give Jay Hay the starting shortstop job. Clint Barmas continues to flat out stink as his strikeout to walk ratio has now reached 36 to 1. It stinks! Don't play stinks! Sure, Josh Harrison doesn't profile to be a starting player and his stats aren't all that great, but he proved to be a spark plug for a few weeks last season. Outside of Barmas' ridiculous contract, there's no reason to not give him a shot to help this anemic offense. Hopefully it doesn't take Barmas getting involved in a plane crash to get him out of the lineup. He's hitting big flies, yes, that'll be Jay. For shaving cream pie, they said under a cheap. He is a small fried, but that'll be Jay. We'll stand by well, the bombist was above a man. He was a sucking, uh -uh, the bum was missing and was swinging through well, uh, You know he's scrappy, baby. He'll hit and bunt, maybe then someday they will come through. Well, that'll be Jay. He's hitting big fly. Yes, that'll be Jay. With shaving cream pie, they said under a cheap. He is a small fry, but that'll be Jay. We'll stand by. Jose Tabat has looked very shaky in the outfield and at the plate for much of the 2012 season. You just shake it, back and forth. Many, including myself, felt that Tabata was slowed by injuries last year and would finally pick up his game with a fresh start in 2012. However, he's only hitting 234 with a 284 on base percentage and a 640 OPS. Combine this with his 55% stolen base percentage and you see that these numbers aren't very good for a top of the order hitter. Tabato was also benched this week for not running out a three foot squibber in front of the plate which turned out to be a double play. Jose had better get his head in the game soon. The Bucks have invested over $11 million into him, and although he has a very friendly team contract, he could still end up being a wasted long-term expenditure if he doesn't pan out. Here's another story of belligerent Pirates fans, which at the end of the day may compete with the America Jacket Guy story from last year. Last Tuesday, a woman, her boyfriend, and her father were asked to leave PNC Park because the woman was smoking at her seat. While being escorted out, the woman's boyfriend decided to attack the security guard. In the struggle, the guard's finger was caught in some fencing and was literally ripped off. Rick, what you want to do is grab a hold of your middle finger, twist, and pull. Ugh, just like that. The guard, who was shrieking in pain, went to the hospital and had to have his digit reattached. 
Meanwhile, the attackers face at least five criminal charges from the incident. What is with these lunatics attending Pirates games? Well, I suppose it makes sense. You'd have to be a straight up lunatic to follow a team that's lost for 19 straight years like we have. Meek's stay with the Pirates turned out to be a short one as outfielder Gorky Hernandez was promoted to the big club this week. Hernandez had hit 266 at AAA Indianapolis and was rewarded for apparent good play. I really can't foresee Hernandez being a major upgrade to the team. He's another speedy, light hitting outfielder with a decent glove and something that the Pirates seem to have in spades. <laughs> He didn't even sniff an appearance in any of the games this week. You know, with an offense as bad as the Pirates have, why bring a guy up if you don't plan to use him at all? You might as well try something different when five different players on your team are hitting under 200. The Miami Marlins were the first opponent for the Bucks this week in a two-game series at the new Marlins Stadium. On Monday, the Pirates won 3-2. Brad Lincoln improved to 3-0 in the season as he was supported by Rod Barajas in his third home run. Barajas is finally starting to hit as he went 8-for-17 with three home runs this week. On Tuesday, the Pirates lost 6-2. Kevin Correa had a rare bad road outing giving up six earned in three and two-thirds innings. It was then on to Washington for another two-game series against the Nationals. On Wednesday, the Pirates lost 7-4. The game was still in doubt until Adam LaRoche hit a bases-clearing triple off Evan Meek in the seventh. This is a baffling move by Clint Hurdle considering the high-leverage situation and Meek's struggles this year. On Thursday, the Bucks won 5-3. Andrew McCutcheon hit two homers and made a sweet catch in the outfield to preserve a developing perfect game by James McDonald. He lost the no-no, but he ended up striking out 11 Nats in five and two-thirds innings. The Pirates traveled to Detroit for an interleague series against the Tigers. Friday's game could have been historic as the Pirates lost 6 to nothing. Tigers ace Justin Verlander completely dominated and had a no-hitter going into the ninth inning. With one out in the ninth, Josh Harrison flared a single into center field, breaking up the no-hit bid. On Saturday, Andrew McCutcheon had another two home run performance and a 4-3 win. A.J. Burnett pitched six effective innings and Joel Hanrahan got his ninth save of the season. On Sunday, the Pirates couldn't hold on to two different leads and a 4-3 loss. Clint Barmas and Rod Barajas made some bad fielding errors in the late innings which really cost the team. Tigers pitcher Max Scherzer struck out 15 Pirates in the game. The Bucks caved 41 times over the three game series and 74 times over the seven games this week. It seems as if the beat goes on for the Bucks. They did enough to win three out of the seven games this week, but it took a couple of two homer games and some strong pitching to do it. The Pirates are going to need some more consistent hitting performances to start to turn these under 500 weeks into above 500 ones. Next week, the Pirates have six games at home, three against the upstart New York Mets and their first three games against the Chicago Cubs. Well, that about does it for this week. Follow me on Twitter, at MercerBoy, for some in-game analysis and hilarity, and thanks for watching this week in Real Pirate. I'm Greg Mercer.